Talal. Hello. 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 Hello there, we hear you. Hello, hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm actually Arabic speaker, so excuse me for my English. So um, you speak English very well. Yeah, I'm trying actually. So the question that you're asking that if we Muslims have an angel, uh, actually we don't. We don't have an angel. This is, um, there's no original scripture for the main angel that had been uh, coming to uh, Jesus in his time. There's no preserved uh, scriptures and Christians know this. We don't have the main scripture from Jesus' time. And you know, the Bible at the moment, it's uh, from like after 300 years from Jesus' death, no one's have been, um, no one of the writers have been in Jesus' time. No one saw Jesus actually. So the main question that um, I want to ask you is that we have to establish, first of all, that the Jew have re rejected Jesus and they have killed Jesus. So me and you, Christians and Muslim, one of them, uh, one of them is correct, either Muslims or Christians. So we need just to take out the Jews right now from this argument. They did not believe in Jesus at all. They did not believe that he's a prophet or a god or whatever. They didn't. And you know what? What they did to him, they kill him. So the question is going to be, Christians worship Jesus as God and Muslim follow him as a prophet. And we have just one, um, like, one, like, one statement that we don't agree with Christians. All these Wait, prophets came with the one message that, Talal. that God is one. Off. Can you hear me? I, I don't, yes, I'm yes, going to yes. cut you off. But I want you, I just want you to uh, to stay focused on the subject here, which is specifically the NGO. So you you said that Muslims do not have the NGO. So so who does have the NGO? Well, no one have the angel. A lie of Quran no. said. Wait, yeah, wait, can no I just one. jump we in? We don't have the main scriptures. In a lie of Quran said wait, wait. yes. A lie of Quran said that the angel, the main scriptures that given to Jesus have been changed and corrupted and mm. have been lost the same as the Torah to Moses. Wait, where does it say that? Uh, just one minute. Let me bring for you the verse. Sure. Just one minute. Yeah. Are you going to go to Surah Bakra Ayah 79? I honestly don't think she has a reference. Just one minute. Because okay. I'm actually, I could read it in Arabic, uh, but I want to bring it in English too. So the audience could could just read it. Yeah. Okay, well, while you're searching for that, I just want to address a few things you've said as kind of statements rather than questions. Um, the whole... Christians don't know. Uh, the, the Bible was written 300 years after, therefore it has no sort of resemblance to what Jesus actually said. And that's just very fallacious. And it's fallacious for the same reason that even the Muslim would say, oh, well, we have an oral tradition, right? And an oral tradition can go back. Well, likewise, so do we, so do Christians. So we have our own oral traditions that, um, that demonstrate that we can go back through a chain of Isnad all the way to Isa, to Jesus. So we can validate the things he said in the Bible. Um, and also we have manuscripts before um, 300 AD. We have them going back to the second century. So that for us is is not really an issue. Christopher Bishop, can you type in the chat if you are a Muslim or not, please? In the chat, please. You are a Muslim? Confirm it for me in the private chat. I can't my, my camera and my my stuff is freezing so I can't really see if you're nodding your head yes or no or whatever so it's in the private chat you're able to message in the private chat 
to say, yes, I am a Muslim or no, I am not a Muslim. If you're not a Muslim, this is only for the Muslims. That's pretty clear. The link says Muslims only. So, so you are a Muslim, okay. <sighs> yeah, so, uh, you know, we're, we're, we are back here at it again with the claims about the NGO. I always find it really interesting when they say what the NGO is not, but Chris, they can't tell us what the NGO actually is. So we'll see if we yep. get if we get here with this. Just one minute. I'm trying. To, I have. Um, I think there's a surah called in Maida, uh, verse number thirteen. Okay. Uh, so surah so Maida, verse thirteen. Right. Yes. Um, if you read Quran in a lot of verses. God gave us like a story about how the Injil have been corrupted and been changed. And there is no reason that um, Allah, whatever God, can send another prophet to correct this misconceptions um, about God. So he sent Jesus, Jews rejected him, and then he sent another prophet, Muhammad. So he just correct these misconceptions. He came with the same message. If Prophet Muhammad came with another message, you could say, well, Islam is a false religion and it's, there's no prophet called Muhammad or whatever. Okay. But so in Quran, gonna... if you read this, if you read about Injil, whatever, in each, in each verse, he spoke about what exactly, the, uh, there's an, a book called Zabur, if you know it, that was yeah. before Moses. Yes. So why you don't speak about this? What, what I'm just focusing on the Injil and the Torah. The Injil and yeah. Torah are the main topics for this because they're the ones that um, I think are easiest to demonstrate that Muhammad got it wrong with. Now, you brought up Surah yes. Al-Maida, Ayah 13. That does not say what you think it says. It doesn't talk about some grand um, corruption theory that the Torah was corrupted because that's what it's in context to of the Torah. It talks about how they simply um, they took the Torah and they changed the words when they were reciting it. In other words, they have the actual Torah Keep that in mind, they have the actual Torah. And then when they tell people what it says, they change it in their recitation. So that actually affirms that they did have the Torah. In order to distort the Torah, you have to have the Torah to know what it is that you're distorting from. So that again, that actually points to my point, not yours. You, you said that the, 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 the angel of the Torah aren't around. Were they around at the time of Muhammad? Hello. Are you still there? We can't hear you if you're if you're speaking. Hello. Should we let someone else up as well? If there's someone uh, someone waiting. Hello. Oh, yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Yes. So I'm asking: Is the Torah? Is the word of God according to Christians? No, did you did you hear his question? Yeah, you you haven't actually answered what I asked you. Is the Torah and the angel present at the time of Muhammad? Sorry, sorry, the, the connection is lost. Sorry. No worries. Um, is the Torah and the angel present at the time of Muhammad? What do you mean of present? So, did, was it there at the time of did Muhammad um, have access to the angel and the Torah? In a non-corrupted way. No. No. He have access to the corrupted ones. So during the prophet Whoa, time, okay. yes, the Jews who was in Mecca, the Christians, the idol worshippers, all of them, the Jews have correct corrupted book, and the Christians have a corrupted book. They didn't have the originals. They didn't. They didn't, they didn't. have the originals. Yeah, because on, if on, they on, do on, have, on, if they do have really, listen to me, if they do have yeah, the originals, one, one, one second, yeah. one so second, Christians yeah. now, okay. one second, tell out, tell out, respectfully. So, uh, oh, sorry, we have sorry, sorry. someone, we have someone, we have a Muslim here who I believe is, you know, more knowledgeable on this subject. So, I would, I want to give it to him to be able to carry this conversation. Yeah. Stay around though, because I don't think that he might, he might not be, you know, here forever. So, if a couple of minutes. No, <laughs> no I'm not going to throw you off, John. Stay around, <laughs> Okay, so I want to keep okay. on that. Stay, in, stay backstage because they'll probably throw me off in a minute or two. 
Okay, we will, we will tell you of course not, man. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you here. I was wondering if you join, and I'm, I'm really glad you have because now we get to have a conversation. How are you doing, Chris? You know, I'm doing I, well, thank you. You know, and you? I, I'm good, I'm okay. You know, we've tried to speak in the park, but the park is not the best setting. You know, just the presentation you gave today to try and deliver that in the park would be impossible, right? You know, it's, yeah, it's a different, it's a totally different atmosphere and it's more of a back and forth, etc. So it's hard to get your your thoughts um, off the paper in, in the park. Um, true, true. But I, I would like to bring it. Well, I would like to debate with others like Hamza, like yourself and others about this particular topic in the park. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's a difficult topic to debate in the park. And hopefully we can have a discussion here. You know, if, if God logic uh, doesn't throw me off as he usually does. And um, <laughs> usually, you were here, yeah, la you were here last time for hours. What are you talking about? No, you, I wasn't. It, it's Hamza was here. First thing yeah, you, I like to say is, uh, I don't think you and Hamza I don't here. think. Hold on, hold on, because you, you try, you're trying to muddy the waters a little bit. You and Hamza was here. That? I did not kick you off. I let you guys talk your piece. I even let Hamza get a little rowdy a little bit, but you know. And the time, I, I the, time off, that, so. the time before that, the time before that. The time you before that, I kicked you. Minutes. That was once. It was about two minutes. That was once, but that's that's because you wasn't answering a direct question. Well, that's the thing. We, we're trying to get thoughts. We're trying to get whole concepts across to each other. It's, it's difficult to answer yes or no questions. You know, as as Chris has shown in his presentation, it's a it's a it's a much more vast topic which need and there's many areas to discuss. Um, and by yeah, the way, I'm, Chris, I'm, I do, I'm very... huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm aware with there are certain things that require expounding on. And I understand that there are certain things that can be answered straight away. So I, I, yeah. in that example, I was asking you a straight away question, <laughs> not one of these questions that need to be expounded on. And I repeatedly yeah. made that known to you and you, you know. Okay. So yeah, that's I mean, why I was like, I okay, we can do it here. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, th I thought I need a bit more time to explain. But anyway, um, I'm here now. Uh, the first thing I'd like now. to say is, the first, first thing I would like to say is that I don't think that Hamza's Christian father would be <laughs> very happy with you saying that I am Hamza's father. You know, I think I think I think Hamza's father would be very upset. Um, you know, he's still oh, proud all of in him. Jest. even though yeah, he's a Muslim. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, I think his father would still be proud of him. But anyway, um, to the topic, first of all, Chris, I'd like to say that I enjoyed your line of thinking. Um, you know, I watched your presentation and it seems that you've understood the topic a lot more than most Muslims and Christians, to be honest. Um, it is kind of the same line of thinking that I have. Obviously not the same as in uh, we, we disagree. But what I mean is that the line of thought is the same. So it's, you know, the, the, the answers that I have, I believe, will answer all of your points. Um, and I agree with some of your points as well. Some of your points are true and valid. Um, like what the, do you agree with? I agree with the map that you, you know. You just put a map, and you spoke about some of the different uh, trinitarian uh, groups or or sects or empires that the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was familiar with at his time, and he did refer to them as people of the book um, uh, because the, from from uh, some scholars' understanding, which is the this, the understanding I follow, is it, it encompasses all people of the book. You know, regardless of, for instance, whether you're Catholic or Protestant or Unitarian or you know, from the Islamic perspective of a, an original Christian sect, etc. The, the the concept of people of the book is is a much wider concept. Um, but. I want to engage with with your PowerPoint if that's if that's okay. We can go through it, and I can kind of comment. Uh, I've made a few comments as as you was going along, and maybe I can give you my yeah, sure. my perspective, and then you can give me your perspective, and hopefully we can really get good. to some understanding. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Is there any particular slide you want me to bring up? Um, um, I mean, we could take it from the beginning, something? then we could just skip through. You know, uh, but we could just go if you take it from the beginning, and then I could give my. Two pens, if you like. Is it, is it okay if we go straight to the Muslim NGO versus this corrupted NGO, right? This concept that the the Muslims had a particular NGO that they were referring to, while there was this other NGO that 
wasn't exactly it that it was talking. Can we get straight to that one? That point? I don't think we can because I think if we go through the PowerPoint, it'll become clear that there's there's actually maybe three NGOs, not two. <laughs> so uh, Chris actually, um, uh, you know, mentioned that I I uh, am somebody who uh, mentions that there's possibly two NGOs. Um, I'm not. I'm actually someone who mentions it possibly three NGOs, believe it or not, a trinity of NGOs. Um, and I don't mean, you know, Matthew, Matt, Luke, and John. I mean, like, uh, you know, a, 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 in its entirety. Um, it, I think I think this is before. We, it was a couple of slides before I wanted to comment on. Wait, before that, this or after this? Yeah, no, from the very beginning, there was, there was something... Uh, so uh, sorry, you have all this, but then it just goes to here. This is my starting slide. Oh, that's okay. If you go to the next, uh, next slide, which was that, and then this yeah, one. okay, this one, this one, yeah. So um, okay, yeah. So yeah, I mean, you 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 uh, outline here that this this is I would is what I would say is referring to, uh, you know, uh, when it, here it says uh, confirming that was before it and it revealed the Torah in Jew. So. Of course, from the Islamic perspective, as you know, uh, you know, we believe in a Torah and the Injil that was revealed before the Quran. Okay, so that, you know, just to make it very clear for, for everyone who's listening, um, and he revealed the Torah and the, and the Injil. Now, an, in, an important point, just as we go on, is I don't want to translate Injil to gospel. Now, Chris and uh, God Logic might uh, not agree with this. <laughs> um, but from the Islamic yeah, I perspective, with that. yeah, I mean, but from the Islamic perspective, um, you know, as I said, whether you, whether you agree with the Islamic perspective or not, from the Islamic perspective, the Injil is a singular document. It's a book that was revealed to Jesus. That's that's what we believe. I know I know you don't agree with that concept, but as you mentioned, Chris, the Sunni position, the Sunni Islam position, uh, that is the mainstream Sunni belief. You you, you so can you I just Jump right in here. So actually, yeah. well, I have issue even with that. First of all, the idea that it's somehow established in Islam that the Injil is necessarily a singular document is unfounded. The Injil is a singular Arabic word, so it's a singular thing, but there's nothing that says it's a singular document or a singular book or a singular chapter or a singular anything. It's just a singular thing called the Injil. And we know the roots of the word Injil, Evangelion, they ultimately go back to the idea of it being the good news. Um, and the audience, again, this is two, because this is to the world, right? The Quran is a revelation to all of mankind. So when Christians see this, the majority, 99% or so, are Nicene Creed-believing Trinitarians at this point in history. What are they going to think the Injil is? You mean, you mean today, you mean? No, at the time of Muhammad. At the time of Muhammad? Well, there were different Christians. We, I'll come to that later. Oh, sure. You know, there, there were definitely yeah, different yeah. Christians. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There were Christians you know. who were not part of the yeah. Imperial Church, the Oriental Church, the Orthodox Church, Roman yeah. Catholic Church, the Church of the East. But all of those churches I just listed are all Nicene Creed-believing Trinitarian churches. So that encompasses 95, if I'm being generous, percent of the whole world. I, I totally agree. I totally agree. At the time of the Prophet, وسلم, the majority of Christians at that point had unified on Trinitarian Nicene Creed, but they were not—they were not the only sect, as you know. They were, they Absolutely, were, they were not yeah. the only sect. But if yeah. the majority, I, I, is I, I like totally one agree. Sect, I totally agree with you. The majority uh, were Nicene Creed followers. Now let's just go back to. The, the Can I original. add one more thing to that? Yeah, just sure. before. So based on you saying, okay, yeah, the majority are Nicene Creed believing Trinitarians. When Muhammad uses the term Al Al Kitab, people of the book. Who are the majority of people he's referring to? Well, it's not if the Quran the, is for the world, it's not the, just the majority. Now there there is differences of opinion Islamically on this. Okay, um, the opinion that I follow is that anyone who identifies broadly with a prophet of God, okay, it's not necessarily to do with the book, but that is another opinion in Islam. Imam Nawawi is of the opinion that it sh that they should have the original book. In, in order to be referred to as Ahl al-Kitab. I don't follow that opinion. I follow the opinion that it's if it's a more broad term. The reason is because, as you mentioned in your presentation, the Prophet interacted with different types of Christians. He interacted with Heraclius, who was a Trinitarian. 
he interacted with sending letters to different parts of the empire, including interaction with the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. And they were Trinitarians. So, but he, the Prophet Muhammad regarded them as people of the book. Now, yes, there's, there's different terminology. Okay. I, I regard them as people of the book. Okay. What does that mean? What does that mean? From an Islamic That's perspective, a good question. Yeah, from an Islamic perspective, from a Sharia perspective, it just means that you can eat from their food and you can marry from them. That's t- basically what it means in today. Okay. From from the perspective of what Muslims can do regarding their interactions, maybe, but there's actually a lot of other things that are applied specific, specifically to those groups, right? So Surah 90, uh, 98, Ayah 6, it says that those who just believe from the people of the book, they are the worst of creatures. That's a theologically yeah. relevant statement, and will be, because this is a revelation for all mankind, that is predominantly, um, supposedly, about Trinitarians. So, yeah, exactly. So you, you, so you, uh, you acknowledge that that, there, that Islam is acknowledging that that there are people of the book who are not believers. Yeah, all al kitab yeah. refers to people who are um, they are uh, polytheists the and people who are correctly believers. So people who are correctly following the Injil exactly. Torah, they're al kitab exactly. as well as people who are not. So You've it's both it. categories. We agree. But one we category agree. is like 95% I and agree. the other category is I remaining agree. five. I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. So let's go back to the, uh, the original point. So from the Islamic perspective, we have a Torah that was revealed to Moses. This is a direct revelation given to Moses. And interestingly enough, the Old Testament speaks about this Torah. It speaks about Musa going up the mountain, receiving the Torah. Okay, so the New Testament speaks about the Torah uh, as opposed to being the Torah, if that makes sense. There's a clear distinction between, from an Islamic perspective, I'll, 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 I'll just make, I'll make that caveat. But from the Islamic perspective, there's a clear distinction between the five books which are authored by Moses, which is largely a history of the life of Moses, etc., and the before creation and things like that, and what was given to Moses, which the, which the first five books speak about. So from the Islamic perspective, the Torah is a book given to Moses, right? And the Zabur is also a book that was given to David, not a collection of 150 poems, many of them with different authors. And the Injil, likewise, is a book which was given to Jesus, not a collection of biographies written after Jesus. You know, so we accept these books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Paul, etc., were biographies or, or testaments which were authored after Jesus. Of course, from the Christian perspective, you believe the authors of these were inspired by God. Now, this is where we differ. We believe that, that God gave Jesus a book from himself rather than later scribes being inspired and given a biographical account or a collection of biographies. So is that but, from, the, from the Islamic perspective, are you clear on? Hmm. I mean, obviously, Chris, I know you know this. I'm just making it clear for the viewers so we can yeah, for everyone can proceed. Watching. Oh, that makes yeah. sense. You know, that's a good way of doing it. I would challenge the the idea that this is a truly Islamic perspective. I don't think it is at all. Um, you don't get that from the Quran. There's no there's no indication that in the Quran it's actually got its own understanding of what the Torah and Injil are. In fact, it assumes the reader knows what the Torah and Injil are. It assumes there's no debate. There is no point in the Quran where it says, okay, this Torah is like a fake one. You guys got to reject this. Be on the lookout. It's a bad one. No, no. It that's talks about the Trinity and stuff. And now. this one's a good one. Yeah, yeah but it, it all interlays. It all interlays. No, yeah, My but, point is, is that but, the Quran, no, but, the Islamic perspective of what these yeah. things are, assumes it's already known. Not necessarily. No. Not when you look at the, the entirety of the Quran and the authentic Hadith, remember, you, you have to remember that from the Islamic perspective, of a lot of time on God Logic, God Logic, God Logic's channel and Samsung Moon's channel and, and etc., they speak about the Quran only. Now, as you know, Chris, from the Islamic perspective, that the, 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 the Quran is not the only source of revelation for the Muslim. We have the authentic hadith. If something is an authentic as a hadith and it's been proved to be from the Prophet, peace be upon him, a Muslim cannot deny that hadith. We have vast amounts of authentic hadith. And when you take all of them into consideration, and hopefully I'll be able to show you some of these hadith today to, to show you my perspective if we get a chance and I don't get kicked off, then 
you know, then you, you'll be more enlightened as to what the Islamic narrative actually okay. is. Let's do that then. Can you show me any hadith that is authentic that explains that the Torah is not what the Jews had at the time of Muhammad? It's something different. That okay. was only available in the Hijaz and it was a unique, properly preserved one. And the one, the other one that the Jews had, the rabbinic Jews, that was corrupted. Okay. First of all, I want to make a distinction first, just before we get on to that, because I don't want to... What's wrong, Godoji? Brother, I think it's going really. By the way, Chris, I think it's going really well. I don't know. It's a, it's a very straight, it. it's let's, a let's very straightforward. It. It's a, yeah. It's a straightforward request. There's a lot of you know dancing around going on. It's really so easy to say that straight, when you don't know. Request. So please, logic, like you, you said, you, you made you made something. You made a claim. No, but made, I can totally understand. Like, God bless you. Oh no, John. He put I can forth totally understand there. your position. John, John, you don't know. John. John. Can you relax? I you, don't, totally I, you, said, you, said, you, you said you're afraid of getting kicked you off. So just relax. So, you know. so just got, relax. A great you know. discussion. I, I think so, we're yeah, a great so, Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll do this. Hold on a second. I'll just do this. There we go. So this is what is going to happen, John. You've already waffled enough. You okay. Waffled enough. So get to the point where you're, you you just said that. that according to Islamic view, that there's this unique, different Torah that the Quran and the in, in the Hadith are talking about. So Chris asked you specifically. Yes, you yes, show a specific it. reference where yes. it shows and identifies a different Torah that they had, right? See, get to the reference, are you, please. Are you ready? You're the one who's going on, God Logic. So get if to the If you reference. share it, um, if you could come present your screen, you can show it and we'll bring it up. Yeah. It, first of all, it's very important. See, God Logic. He wants yes and no quick answers. And Chris knows that it's such a wider topic than that. He's shown from his knowledge of his presentation that it's a much wider topic. Yeah, but with respect, brother, in humanity, John, um, I try and be concise with... Oh, is he gone? He's right there. I'm just... <laughs> I'm good. He's right okay, there. I try and be concise when I speak. It's something that I spend a lot of time practicing so that I can get to the point. I say what I need to say, and then I let someone respond because I trust in what I say. I have confidence in what I say, so I don't need to, you know, add lots of flavor and just keep it going for ages. I can be like, nope, this is what it is. That is the point. So if you could please come up and, and show me that quickly, I would really appreciate it because otherwise we're, we're not going to get anywhere. And this stream is going to take like five hours. And uh, exactly. people have this other is, things to do, exactly I imagine. Why, this is exactly why he didn't want to get straight to the point of, of his claim. His claim is... That the Muslim, the the Torah, uh, the Torah that the Quran and the Hadith talk about, is, and the Injil that the Quran and the Hadith talk about, is a different Torah and Injil than what we have. And then they're like that that was roaming around. There was something different out there. So there's multiple concepts of a Torah and Injil according to the Islamic texts. So, but instead of getting straight to that, he had to he wanted to waffle some more and waste more time. Chris, you asked him a very straightforward question, a very straightforward request. Okay, can you show me the hadith then? Show us, show us in the hadith this concept of a different Torah and different gospel than, than what they had in, in their possession. Show it to us. Show us that, it, that, that there was this different, unique Torah and gospel that it was talking about. Uh, no, no but, but first, before we do that, before we before we get there, yeah, there's something that we need to say, yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah, British as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I, love, I love your British accent, uh, Avery. It's good. Yeah, that's all good. That's, it makes me laugh, man. All right, Chris. Now, just to let you guys know, I did not kick him. I removed him from the stage, but he was still in the lobby. He left from the lobby himself. I was going to bring him back up after Chris finished, but he he, he was he's still welcome to come up. And get straight to the point. Enough waffling. We, we sit here and let him, get, I mean, you know, we've been polite, been respectful. Let the man get away with murder. Let's get to it now. Let's actually get to the crux now. 